So here's a screencast on the layers of the Earth, uh, which is what we've been talking about. I think this is a pretty good representation of um, our Earth's layers, starting out here with the continental crust. Our crust is the outermost layer. Uh, we used lots of analogies thus far. It's the skin of an apple. Uh, it's like the shell on a hard-boiled egg. Just to show you that the crust in comparison with the rest of this is extremely thin. Okay, it's only about 1% of the rest. So we have our continental crust which sits on top of our oceanic crust. If we keep moving inward, we get to the mantle. And the mantle's over here on the left side. You can see it's bracketed off from up here, including the crust, all the way down to here. That's the mantle. It makes up most of our Earth percentage-wise. Now, it itself is broken up three ways. Okay, It encompasses the lithosphere, the asthenosphere, and the mesosphere. I want to go through each one of these individually so I'm, I'm sure we know what we're talking about when we mean lithosphere. The lithosphere are the plates. The tectonic plates are also called lithospheric plates. So the, the lithosphere is made up of the crust, which is continental and oceanic, and this part of the mantle. The mantle, for our purposes, we can split up. We can split it up into the upper part of the mantle. Here we are. From here to here is the upper part of the mantle. And from here down to here is the lower part of the mantle. The lower part of the mantle is called the mesosphere. But if we go back up, the lithosphere is the crust plus this upper part of the upper mantle. So it goes from here up through the crust. That's the lithosphere. I'll say it one more time. It's the crust plus this upper part of the upper mantle. If we go down one layer, we're into the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is the lower part of the upper mantle. And the reason why they distinguish between the two is because of their consistency. The lithosphere is hard, it's rigid, it's rocky. The asthenosphere, they call it plastic. It's um, malleable, it's viscous, it can move. And there's convection currents in here that are rotating and it's these plates, it's these lithospheric plates that are floating on top that move, that cause continental drift. So as we keep moving in, we're into the lower part of the mantle, we're into the mesosphere, temperatures are getting hotter, we're getting, um, starting to reach, here it's rigid still because of the pressure, the pressure is also increasing, but if we keep going into the outer core, temperatures rising, um, pressure is too, but down here in the outer core, we're talking about iron and nickel. All right, and here it's molten iron and nickel in this this outer core. We move into the inner core. Pressures are so great that that iron and nickel is solidified. So, just a quick review: we've got the crust, lithospheric plates are up here, the asthenosphere, mesosphere is the lower part of the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. Here's another representation. This talks a little bit more in terms of the physical properties, in terms of um, their consistency. We've got just a quick review. The lithosphere is solid. It's brittle. You know you've dug into the earth. You know what it's like. Just underneath the asthenosphere, solid but malleable. It needs to be malleable so those plates are able to float above it and on it. The mesosphere is solid. The temperatures are rising, so we have an outer core, which is liquid, iron, and nickel, and then our inner core, which is solid because the pressure is so great. I like this next picture because it shows these convection currents. It's kind of um, an intro to what we're going to be talking about next. It's kind of an intro into plate tectonics. Here's our continent sitting on top of our oceanic crust. This, then, from here to here is going to be our lithosphere. We have our asthenosphere right underneath it. We have our mesosphere, our outer core, and our inner core. 